This episode of The Corner Office is brought to you by Vistage Worldwide. In business for over 60 years, we exist solely to help high integrity leaders make great decisions that benefit their families, their businesses, and their communities. back to the show from the corner office. My name is Jackie Kibler and I'm thrilled to be your host for this show. This show was created to help our community in three ways. The first is for current CEOs, business owners and executives who want to elevate their business through gleaning best practices from the successes that are relayed from the CEOs we interview on this show. Additionally, and in line with this thinking, we want to provide insights to those who want to become business owners. The second is for those who are in the process of figuring out what they want to do with their career path, whether it's their first career out of school or any career thereafter. We do this by learning the path of those people we're interviewing. The third is to provide information to companies who may look to Pasadena and the San Gabriel Valley as a place they'd like to relocate and grow their business. And with that, I would like to welcome our guest today from Amada Miachi, America which is the world's leading supplier of equipment and systems for, from a variety of welding, laser, and sealing. They're headquartered in Monrovia. This first is Mark Rodiguero, Pleasure who to be here. is the Executive Vice President of Technology and Business Development, and Tina Carey, who is the Director of Administrative Services. Thank you both for joining us today. It's Thank you pleasure. so much for having us. <laughs> so I think I'd like to start with just um, sharing a little bit about your backgrounds and how you wound up where you currently are. Well, I have a unique background. <laughs> I actually started with Avery Dennison right out of high school. I was there 27 years. When I left, I was the first female plant manager in the history of the corporation. Congratulations. Thank you. And after that, I created my own consulting business that really specialized in leadership and communication skills. Avery ended up to be my best client. <laughs> and then 10 years ago, when the market kind of tanked, we all went through the big recession. I also had a bookstore at the time, and everything kind of came to a close. And the president of currently at that time, at uh, Miachia at the time, Jack Lance, had been my boss at Avery 25 years before. Ironic. And Yeah, and so we had stayed in touch. And through him, I was hired as the director of human resources. So I've been there 10 years now. <laughs> it's your decade anniversary. There Congratulations. You go. Thank you very much. <laughs> I made it. Woo. <laughs> yeah. Okay. How about you, Mark? OK. Uh, well, it started with the space program, really, literally, because when I was a kid, we were just, um, you know, Sputnik had launched. And um, when I was in high school, we landed on the moon. And so I was always involved in technology. So I was always, you know, and when you're a kid in that age, you're, you know, Technology was very, very exciting. It's what people were doing. Um, and so I went into engineering and um, you know, worked for a variety of different companies. Uh, but at some point along the way, I wanted to have more of an influence because it mattered to me what, that we would make the right decisions to do things and do things in the right way. And that led me towards uh, more of a management role, more of a supervisory role. And I could see what I could do, what I could accomplish with a team of people as, as opposed to just um, by myself. Um, the story about how I got to Amata Miyachi is a little bit different, though, because in particular. Um, I was working for a large computer manufacturer, a large company in the 80s. And this is at a time when um, there were mergers and acquisitions, and we were trying to hire a bunch of people. And I would interview these engineers that had no skill whatsoever in managing their own careers. So one of the things I think you want to explore is, you know, what do you do? How do you manage your own career? And I saw really good people not not understanding their own careers and how to manage it. So when I became a manager, I made it a point. I would tell my engineers, even to this day, every 12 to 18 months, preferably at a time when you're not unhappy with me, okay, <laughs> polish up your resume, 
put another bullet on there, summarize what you've learned in the last year, whatever it is, and go out on an interview. And so, and then the idea is when you come back to work on Monday morning, you're choosing it. You're choosing to come back here because you've seen what's out there. Hopefully that's the result, okay? I haven't lost anyone yet. Yay. <laughs> so it was, my, it was my turn to do this, you know, for my own career. So I picked an uh, interview position, um, an interview site that was, um, where the location was uh, about an hour and a half away. It was in Orange County. And I, I picked it specifically in the, in the off chance that they offered me a job, I could say, well, I'll reconsider maybe, you know, maybe the travel, the commute is too much for me, I couldn't do it. Turned out that was just the recruiter's office. And when they told me about the job, it was a, a literally a mile from my house. I said, oh man, this is like kismet. kismet okay, so. definitely. <laughs> so I have to find out what that's about. So I met um, uh, Jack Lance at that time, and I, I saw in him um, the kind of person that could teach me things that I, in, you know, fill out the rest of my professional background in terms of business and finance and things that he was really particularly good at, and I could contribute my technology and management skills to him, and that was 24 years ago, so there we are. That's so, amazing. And even to this day, I still, I still advise my engineers to do that, and uh, you can ask any of them, and uh, I don't know how many actually go through that, but I know that I haven't lost anybody yet, so. Oh, wow. When you think about the people that you bring into Amada Miyachi, what strengths do they have? What do you look for when you're bringing in new people? Well, I think on the technical on side, obviously, you want somebody who is creative, um, has the opportunity to think out of the box. And I think that we look for folks who are going to help us grow, okay? Not just folks that are content where they are. Yeah, I think that that's a good way of putting it. When I, you know, beyond the basics, be honest, show up. Okay, yeah. that's a big one. That's a big one. Being <laughs> there is a good first step. That's actually a big one nowadays. Yeah, nowadays it's an interesting uh, time we're living in. But anyway, uh, specifically what I look for is someone who's just curious and just wants to, you know, wants to be involved. I remember being on the interviewing sequence for an accountant, and that has nothing to do with my, an, a technical skill, but I was interviewing her because part of her responsibilities was to look at um, and manage the, our, our costs and, and our proposals that we were doing for these custom machines. And the thing that struck me about her is I took her on a tour of our labs and our equipment, nothing that she would touch in her daily life, okay, but it was her interest in what the business was about that attracted me to, to her as an employee. For, that's why one of the reasons I recommended her. And, and this was for an accounting position, not even for an engineering position. For a, for a technical position or, or someone that, you know, that wanted to do more along those lines, um, okay, what would you think would be important? Like science, technology, engineering, mathematics, the STEM programs? Okay, I would add, like to add three more things, okay? Speech. Okay, uh, critical thinking, which when I was going to school, I think it was called general composition, where you learn to write a persuasive es essay, sure. you make it persuasive. And last but not least, drama. And the reason is, is when you want to effect change in a corporation, in any kind of organization, you're constantly reading a skeptical audience, okay? And it's, it's um, that skill of, of, of looking at their body language and finding out, okay, how are they receiving this? How should I present it? How should I... Um, yeah, even the timing and how you present things is important. So you can gain a lot of technical skills at school, um, but the soft skills about how to be effective, that's where you know, speech, you know, create, uh, good writing, and uh, being able to understand the audience and the people that you're explaining things to. Those are very useful and needed skills, I think, in yeah. any role that you're in. I think so. Be, to be effective, you can have great ideas, but to be effective, you, you, you have a large group of people that you're working with and that you're trying to wor or work through and uh, to make these changes mm -hmm. and understanding you know of course how to compromise and you know <laughs> keep your, your keep your sights on what the end goal is and not on the on the uh, you know day to day ups and downs of things right yeah without a doubt you know with the type of organization that you two are in I would wager there might be some challenges in bringing new blood in. What do you got, what do you do with that? Well, you know, it's an interesting dilemma. We have very low turnover and we have an aging workforce. Mm. So one of the things that we've been trying to work on is to create a pipeline of new talent. 
And so we've done that through creating an internship program. Really? Yeah. Share a little bit about the internship program. So the concept of the internship program is to bring in college students during the summer, provide them with a specific project to work that brings them new skills, new knowledge, and actually helps us in the short run, that we get an actual project done. And so Mark has been critical in that particular portion of the company. Yeah, actually, it, it started out out of, as I mentioned earlier, is um, out of desperation. <laughs> the end of our fiscal year happened to coincide with the end of school years. And uh, we're building quite sophisticated machines, and we needed people that were had some technical interest or inclination to help us through the you know, last couple of months of, uh, of our fiscal year. Um, we set up a very informal um, relationship with a local school over here and with a professor in particular, and he would send us over a couple of his top students. And they would work for, for us for about a summer or so. And this is, you know, I'm going back 15, 20 years ago when we were starting to do this. Um, since then, we've hired eight or nine of those people as direct employees, and we've had them on, and some have been temporary employees for a period of time. Uh, more recently, as, ten, as uh, Tina pointed out, we've we've more or less formalized it. Um, we design programs or, or projects, uh, like we will come, to get, come up with like a list of six or eight different projects. Each project is about eight weeks. We envision to be about an eight week assignment. Mm -hmm. uh, it will deliver something that we want to do but never quite had enough time or resource to do, okay? And it's something where um, somebody can come in with some basic, um, like I said, an inclination for that skill or that, that technology and, and leave the eight weeks after eight weeks having acquired some kind of depth in that particular skill. So what they do is they'll have, they'll have like a written you know, assignment for what to do. Um, and at the end of the whole program, they'll make a presentation to a management team, like a you know, five-page PowerPoint kind of a thing. Gives sure. them, it gives them that, that drama experience, yes. you know, the little, you know, how, to, how is this going over, you know? And uh, it's a very, very exciting time. Um, but what, one of the things that we do that makes it valuable to the company, because a lot of times, you know, managers will say, why, why do I want to bring extra work? I mean, if I have to supervise somebody, that, that makes it extra work. Um, what we do, is uh, we'll, we'll tie the intern to a, a practicing engineer that may not be a supervisor, but maybe it's somebody you want to develop as a supervisor. And that person gets an eight week low pressure assignment to just guide somebody through, you know, supervise somebody else's work. And it's a, it's a really rewarding experience. When I talk to my staff after you know, a summer internship program over there. They're excited about the whole thing. They want to do it again. They say, can we bring this, can we, instead of bringing interns here, can we go out to schools? I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's uh, from, that was an unexpected result. Yeah. <laughs> but it was there nonetheless. I mean, it was something quite exciting. It's, uh, that's what keeps us engaged in the program. So if I'm hearing you correctly, you've got almost an in-house mentor program for people that may be leaders in the future, plus you're helping people in the local community that are going to school with projects, which also is helping your company. Yeah. That's phenomenal. And, and I'll give you one example. <laughs> I have many, many examples of you know, interns and you know, their, their progress and whatever, but one in particular, um, we had an eight-week assignment. Um, uh, some of us uh, realized that the, our company website needed to be updated in some manner. And, um, I said, you know what, I, I can probably get somebody who's studying this technology in school to give us just a, like a, like a rough draft of a new, new exciting looking uh, web page. So I had some pretty, pretty low bar requirements for the job there. For the, it's just an eight week internship. I said you had to know something about some basic web programming. So we hired somebody or brought somebody in as an intern and he had the minimum requirements for this thing. Um, at the end of the eight weeks, he does his presentation. And one of his slides, I still remember this, he says, this is, this is what I do when I enter the program, these two little things over there. This is what I now know having completed the program. And it was like a page and a half of, of all these relevant, modern, uh, web-based um, computer skills and, and development skills that he had acquired along the way. We got it. Uh, we got a demonstration web page that opened everybody's eyes to see what was possible. And what was possible was, here's a non-professional person that delivered something that was extremely attractive that we didn't think we can get from here to there, and it came from this college student. So talk about a win-win. I mean, this, oh, and, and this, this student at the end, he says, you know, when I entered this thing, he's in a computer science 
program at his school. Right. He said he, he didn't really know if, if he had what it took to be a coder, to be a, a program development. After that eight weeks, he said he had so much confidence in, in, the, in the skills that he had acquired over there that he was convinced that he likes, not, he enjoys doing it, and he's good at it. And that, that was good for his own self-confidence and, you know, and, and reaffirming the path that he was taking through school. So that was, you know, That's I, I have many, many stories, you know, al along those lines over there. You know. I bought, he was part of a team with, with two other uh, college students. They, they worked on separate projects, but then at the end they kind of collaborated, as, uh, which was fun to watch anyway. Uh, and at the end, I bought each of them a Raspberry Pi. And, and they, they <laughs> Raspberry Pi is a little, it's a little, um, it's a quite an interesting little thing, but it's a it's a like a little tiny development computer. You can do many different things it over there. It wasn't a Raspberry Pi. She no, yeah, no, sorry. I was thinking it was a Raspberry Pi. <laughs> no, 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 not edible Raspberry. It's a little <laughs> Linux-based computer. Okay, yeah, um, hopefully many Otherwise of your audience. Otherwise, it was a Raspberry Pi. Oh, right? Right? yeah, it's, it has a little picture of a Raspberry on there. Anyway. <laughs> Uh, and they, they walked out of the, the building, you know, this is their last day, and they were like hugging these little raspberry pies to the, you know, because they knew that this, this is something special for them, and it was um, just kind of like the, the end of the story for that particular internship period. So it was fun. I mean, you yeah. know, um, that, so what I want to say is, is if for, for CEOs or business managers that are, uh, that, you know, have, they're kind of like on the fence about what to do with this internship program, uh, you get way more out of it. Structure it so that it's doable. Use uh, some staff that you that you want to develop as um, you know, su future supervisors to yeah. do the supervision. It's low stress. You know there isn't a, like a big deal coming out of the whole thing. It's relatively inexpensive, and um, and at the end of that thing, you you learn so much for yourself. The students get something something out of it. The company gets something out of it, and um, it just. You know, it adds more positive energy into the world. That's and, what it's for. And you're currently working with one college, and we actually work with more than one. But we have a partnership with PCC. We have a partnership oh, with that's PCC, great. and uh, what we do for them, actually, we'll do it for many. You yeah. Know, so we'll, we'll do it for uh, nearly anybody. Um, it's really kind of neat. Oh, one other bit of advice for companies that want to do this, okay, is time things to to follow into your own your company's calendar. Let's say, like I said, you know, when we first started out, uh, um, our needs were at our fiscal year end, which coincided with the school. Okay, along those lines, we have an annual sales meeting. And in the, in the course of this sales meeting, we'll bring up salespeople from all over the world. They go into our labs. All the labs are set up um, with our lab engineers to explain how to use our equipment and, how, and what's new and things of that nature. So that lasts for about a week. The following week, we invite a school in. And now the labs are all set up. The, uh, the engineers, they've, they've, you know, they've given the same presentation eight times, okay? So they're really <laughs> polished in the whole thing. And uh, we will cycle a group as large as 40 people. We'll just cycle them through all the labs. We have a nice little program. You'll schedule set up with them that terminates in a lunch. And it's no burden on the company because everything's all set up. So, so that's what I mean. When you, when you consider doing an outreach program with somebody, tie it into a, a, some kind of calendar event that makes sense in your own company. And then it's, it's low effort and uh, max, and it's very professional and polished you know, in, in this particular case as far as how, how it um, actually comes off. So the buy-in from your organization must be wonderful because you're including everybody, it sounds like. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, uh, yeah, the, the lab engineers is, um, they, oh, and, and when, the, when the students come in, we've had high school students come in also. Mm -hmm. When they come in, one of the most common comments from the students is, hey, while I was here, they didn't teach, they didn't treat me like a kid. They didn't treat me like a student. It was, it was like, you know, peer-to-peer -peer communicating ideas. And um, uh, I think you can see that from uh, some of the videos that we have of um, interviews with our students. They're just very, very energized by the whole thing. Not just what they learned, but just the, um, the way they were treated in the, in the entire process. I think part of the issue, too, is that we're actually a manufacturing company. Mm -hmm. People think there's no jobs in manufacturing anymore, oh. right? We're right here in Southern California in Monrovia. And so by being able to partner with some of the high schools in the area, we partnered with the San Gabriel Valley Economic Partnership to do this. But it gives kids an opportunity to see, oh, that's what I could do when I grow up. Because I don't think people realize, oh, in manufacturing, you can do this. We could learn how to use a, 
a piece of equipment, we could build that piece of equipment, right? right? So it really gives these kids who are thinking about going into the STEM kind of programs, how would I apply what I'm learning? Can you say a little more about that? How do you get that word out? Well, it's interesting. I'm part of the Chamber of Commerce in Duarte, okay? So I partnered with them in terms of they have a, an education committee that they need to be providing opportunities with. So, geez, we can talk to the high school and you could actually send some kids over. So we've partnered with a number of school districts. Part of that's been with PCC, part of that's been through the San Gabriel Valley Economic Partnership. We also take the opportunity, for example, I go to Career Day every year in, in Monrovia and talk to the high school students about here's an opportunity. We're right down the street. Here's how you want to get a job. Here's the things you need to do. So part of that comes from those of us as individuals who have that drive to serve the community and to share those stories. But it also comes from the idea of knowing that there needs to be a pipeline for the future of people who want to be electronic technicians potential assemblers, as well as engineers. And here's a way to actually see how you might do that job. But I, I take it even, to, to expand on that, I take it even a little bit further. Uh, because um, even, you know, if we, we, we bring in like a STEM class from a high school or something like that, not every one of those, those students is going to go into a technical career. So when we, when we have these high school or college days, you know, like after following our sales meetings, um, I'll show them an entire org chart of our entire company. I said, okay, here's all the different kind of jobs you can do in a manufacturing engineering company. Okay, you're, it, with your STEM background, you're better prepared to handle any one of these job positions, like whether it's in HR or in sales or customer service or, what, uh, or even accounting, like I mentioned, the one case candidate we interviewed, just, just having the, you know, being familiar with what um, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics is about, it gives you um, the, uh, the vocabulary to, to work with other people in this kind of organization, even if your job is not exactly an engineering position or, or something, you know, a, a traditional STEM position. It gives you the background in order to, 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 um, to be effective in any one of these positions. What do you look for when you are trying to find either an intern or an employee? Um, like I said before, beyond the basics, okay. Yeah. Um, uh, versatility, curiosity. I would I'd say you know the, the versatility means that you don't you don't have to enter the position knowing how to do everything. That, I'm not talking about that versatility. It's uh, the versatility of being able to. Uh, see there's a challenge, it's on the edge of what you might know or might be capable of, but you have enough um, uh, just, just inborn you know, driver initiative or, or, or curiosity just to find out about it and then take ownership of the whole thing. Say, you know what, that's, that's something like, I'll look at it, I'll give it a shot and then try it out. So that, uh, I guess, kind of an adventurous spirit, I don't know. I love that. <laughs> I love that. Tina, anything you wanna add? Yeah, I would say that it's, I'm gonna tell you one thing that's very important people need to be able to do basic math and English skills. You'd be shocked how many college students we have that come in that cannot pass a basic math or English test. Really? Absolutely. I go and talk to people all the time about basic math and English has to be something people can accomplish, right? We have a, a basic test we give people called a Wonderlick. And I'm astonished at how many of our potential employees cannot pass that, pass that basic test. So I talk to a lot of organizations through EDD, et cetera, about how important it is. Mark was talking about that earlier, about having those basic skills, right? right? The composition class he was talking about that helps with critical thinking. It's amazing to me how many of our kids don't have that. Wow. I wasn't even aware of that. Yep, is, yep, yep. I'm, I must get the cream of the crop after you do. Pastor. They get through me first, right? <laughs> That's why Tina's there. <laughs> When you look futuristically at programs that you want to do in order to help your organization and the community, what, 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 what comes to mind? That's a good question. Um, well, okay, as, um, as both of you were alluding to, uh, just finding that pipeline of talent to come into the company over there. Um, I, wa I want to, we started with, with, with people about to graduate from college, okay. then. We started looking at junior college 
mm -hmm. uh, students. Okay, now we're even looking at high school kids. So if you just want to look at the progression of what we actually done, we've moved the, the starting point of the pipeline, if you will, further back into the educational process. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, sometimes uh, an another thing that some of the interns say, or one of the values that they pick up from working with us for the summer, is what does it take? I mean, what's it like to work in a, at a company? I mean, they don't, you know, they, where do you get that experience if, if you don't try somewhere? Or you right. don't have that little eight week window of opportunity that you're working with these people from all kinds of backgrounds, all kinds of age levels, you're gonna be working with side by side with somebody that might be uh, as old as your parent or something like that, and you're on a peer. This is a new thing for, for people. So to, to be able to explain to, to um, students that it's not such a, you're not entering a foreign land when you're doing this thing, and to give them some kind of hope, uh, uh, hope for the future, that's Perfect. good. Mark and Tina, thank you so much for joining us today from the corner office. Our time went very fast. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much to the community for tuning in. I'm looking forward to seeing you next time. And cheers to a more profitable tomorrow.